Biblical leadership as a husband and father involves embodying principles of love, responsibility, guidance, and integrity. As outlined in the Bible, mentioned in the Bible on numerous occasions, here are some key aspects based on scripture. Number one is love and sacrifice. Okay, so everything here is going to be scripture based. Ephesians 5, 25 to 28. Husbands, love your wives just as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her to make her holy, cleansing her by the washing with the word. How many of us want a holy wife, right? Cleansing her by the washing with water through the word and to present her to himself as a radiant church without stain or wrinkle or blemish, any, any blemish. But holy, once again, how many of us want a holy wife, right? Holy, right? And blameless. In this same way, husbands ought to love their wives as their own body, right? If you, like, love yourself, right, that's how you're supposed to love your wife, <laughs> as much as you love your own body, right? Husbands are called to love their wives selflessly, not, sh not selfishly, selflessly, right? And sacrificially, emulating Christ's love for the church. The Lord gave himself, gave his life for the church, for his people. We are supposed to lay down our own lives for our family, for our lives. Second, provision and protection. 1 Timothy 5a, anyone who does not provide for their relatives and especially for their own household has denied the faith and is worse than an unbeliever or an infidel, which I'm never going to let that go. Like, I don't want to be an infidel. I want to be worse than an infidel. Providing for and protecting the family is seen as a fundamental responsibility, you know, as a father and husband. Your family, your wife, your children, they're going to look to you for providing. They're going to look for you to take care of their needs. Third, guidance and instructions. Ephesians 6, 4. Exasperate your children. Instead, bring them up in the training and instruction of the Lord. Right? We want to raise our children up to be God-fearing men and women of God. Fathers are to guide their children in the ways of the Lord. How do you do this, right? How do I, you know, make my children, you know, go in the way of the Lord? You teach them right from wrong, right? Nurture, nurturing their spiritual growth. A lot of parents today, they want to nurture the athlete in their child. They want to nurture the different things, but nurture their spiritual growth. Leadership and services, right? Matthew 20, 26 to 28. Not so with you. Instead, whoever wants to become great among you must be your servant. And whoever wants to be first must be your slave. Just as the Son of Man did not come to be served, right? Jesus didn't come so uh, the people on earth can serve him. No, he laid down his life. But to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many, right? He laid down his life for the whole world. Right? Anyone who believes in him, right? Believes in his name, believe what he did, believe he's the son of God, right? Leadership in a biblical sense involves servanthood. Um, you may have the title, right? You may have the position, the authority, but ultimately you're a servant. You're, you're, you're serving those under you. Prioritizing the needs of the family and leading by example, right? As a leader, you're supposed to be making those under you better. Number five, faithfulness and integrity. Proverbs 20, verse 7. The righteousness lead blameless lives. Blessed are their children after them. Living a life of integrity and faithfulness impacts not only the individual, but also blesses their children. Amen. Right? You want to be blessed, but I also want my children to be blessed as well. And number six, encouragement and support. Leadership without encouragement and support, honestly, is not leadership. 1 Thessalonians 5.11. Therefore, encourage one another and build each other up, just as, in fact, you are doing. I love that verse. Encouraging and supporting family members fosters a, a loving, a, 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 a nurturing environment, right? If you, you look at families who feel the most secure, they're probably being supported and encouraged biblically, right? Not supporting you in things you're not supposed to be doing, but from biblical standpoints. Number seven, prayer and spiritual leadership. First Peter 3, 7, husbands, in the same way, be considerate as you live with your wives, right? And treat them with respect as the weaker partner and as heirs with you of the gracious gift of life, right? 
so that nothing will hinder your prayers. As hu as a husband, I don't want my prayers hindered, right? And my family, you know, they they depend on my prayers, my children, my wife. They depend on my prayers, so I can't afford to have my prayers hindered as a husband. Spiritual leadership includes praying for your family and with the family. Take time to pray for your family, ensuring that the spiritual health and well-being of your family is prioritized. You need to pray for yourself and you need to pray for your family. By embodying these principles, a husband and father can lead his family in a way that honors God and nurtures a loving and supporting and spiritually, biblically um, grounded home, right? We see a lot of homes today, a lot of families that's just like out there. If you want your, your home to be grounded, your family to be grounded, you need to lead by example from a biblical example. Amen.